are breaker skills still worth using in today's meta? Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, I'm the Exile Tai, and welcome to a discussion video of sorts. I'll be covering the pros and cons of using a breaker skill, as well as covering some additional details. Then there'll be a final verdict. And if you choose to use breaker skills, I'll include some builds that could run breaker skills at the end. This is all my opinion, but I will explain my thinking. If you have other thoughts or builds for breaker skills, feel free to comment them down below. As always, if you enjoy the content, subscribe! I do a lot of Fire Emblem Heroes content, and there's more to come. Now then, let's get started. Watch me work! So what are breaker skills? Basically, they give the user a follow-up attack and prevent the foe from making a follow-up attack. Granted that it's the right breaker skill for the right class. We do have most breaker skills for most of the cast. We don't have the breaker skills for colored bows and daggers, nor do we have a staff breaker. We also don't have a breaker for colorless tomes or any dragon and beast. A beast breaker might have been really helpful against the goat dream lady. God, that quest was annoying. Anyways, we might get those colored bow and dagger breakers and a colorless tome breaker in the future. I think they just need to release more of them to justify making another breaker skill for them. Moving away from that, breaker skills are rather simple and effective. They force a free double for you and force the foe to not double attack, even if their speed is higher. Let's say you're fighting against Fallen Ike. His speed is incredible, so having Swordbreaker preventing him from doubling you is tremendous. It's much easier to knock out Ike with your double attack. Though he does have Repel, which can decrease the damage, so maybe not knock out Ike, but probably other sword units. If you're curious about Repel, I did make a skill guide about it, and I'll link it in the I card right there. So what are the pros of using a breaker skill? As mentioned before, the double attack. For units who don't have high speed or some way of getting a double attack, breaker skills can help with that. It almost ensures that the unit will be able to deal with that particular foe. And again, as mentioned before, it prevents doubles. Against those high speed or units with good access to doubles, being able to prevent that can be really helpful. Many units rely on getting their follow-up attack so they can proc their special. Making it harder for that to happen is very good for you. It's also very cheap. All of the breaker skills are currently on 3 and 4 star units. There's tons of variety and tons of ways to cover certain classes. If you need a breaker skill, it's not hard to get. If anything, blue tone breaker might be annoying if you don't have a python, in which case you'll have to use female robin who is also a heroic grill unit. Yeah, no. Speaking of no, what's going to make you say no to breaker skills? Well, first off, they're class locked, in both senses. You can't use a breaker skill that goes against the weapon triangle, like a sword unit can't run lance breaker, unfortunately. And if the unit faces a foe of the wrong class, then the skill does nothing. It's helpful for taking on a particular type of foe, but for others, it limits the usefulness of the unit. It also takes up the B slot, which a lot of units need to be good. You miss out on fantastic central skills like Desperation, Vantage, Wrath, Lull, Repel, and much more. Breakers also have an HP condition. While that's not bad in it of itself, there's tons of counterplay to HP condition skills. There's Pain Plus, Savage Blow, and others. Remember, breakers prevent the foe from making a follow-up attack. So if that foe's one attack does enough, it could potentially knock out the unit out of breaker range for the next time. And you have to be careful with which foe the unit with the breaker fights, otherwise they'll take too much damage and lose their breaker. These effects can also cancel with other skills, or they're just outright nullified. So let's cover some details about that cancellation. Typically, both effects may not be cancelled, rather it depends on the skill it's interacting with. Sometimes it will cancel the guaranteed follow-up, or it cancels the prevent foe from follow-up. Any doubles that take place after the cancel would usually be decided by the speed stats. But in some cases, the unit or the foe might have another skill that gives them an upper hand, whether that's another follow-up attack or another prevention. Let's take a look at some examples. Versus skills similar to Bolt Fighter and Ventral Fighter. These fighter skills give a follow-up attack. If your unit has a breaker and goes in, the breaker prevention will cancel with fighter's guaranteed follow-up. Thus, the foe isn't able to get a free follow-up, and your unit isn't able to prevent them from getting a follow-up attack from a different source, more speed, or a different skill. For other skills, it might not be like this, but for Bolt Fighter and Ventral Fighter, the units that run these typically don't have super high speed to get a follow-up, so it's fine. Versus skills similar to Weary Fighter. This fighter skill prevents both units from making a follow-up attack. This cancels with Breaker's guaranteed follow-up attack for the Breaker units. 
so any double for the breaker unit will be decided by speed. This does not cancel a breaker's prevention, so the foe will still be unable to get a follow up. Versus skills similar to Sturdy Impact and Mirror Impact. What if the foe is coming at you with a prevention? Well, it cancels a breaker's guaranteed follow up attack, so the breaker unit can only get a follow up attack from a different source like speed or something. But the foe on the receiving end of the breaker will be unable to make a follow up attack. Versus attack order changing skills similar to Vantage and Desperation. There is no effect at all. Changing the order of attacks is different from the follow up attacks. But this does affect Desperation a bit as it prevents the foe from making a follow up. So Desperation would do nothing for changing the attack order. This applies to other skills and weapons like the Forseti that change the attack order. Speaking of weapons, here's a whole list of weapons that cancel with breakers. I'm not going to list every single weapon here, but I'll mention a few notable ones. Armads, Thunder Armads and Maltad is pretty big for Hector. Imbuted Coma is for New Year's Alphonse and Sharina, and those two are pretty strong. Stopping White Down Spear is pretty nice against the young Pegasus sister trio. Same thing goes for Regan Lee for Duel, Ephraim, and Leon. This also applies for weapon refines like the Binding Blade or the Blaze and Durandal. Unfortunately, Breaker skills don't cancel the in combat stat buffs that Blaze and Durandal gives. And there are also other passive skills that can be cancelled, like other Breaker skills. For example, a Sword Unit with Sword Breaker fights another Sword Unit with Sword Breaker. The Breakers just cancel. There's Follow Up Ring and Odd Follow Up, which is pretty obvious. Holy War's End is Legendary Stellus skill. Basically, the foe attacks, and then he can attack and then make a follow-up attack before the foe can make another attack. It's like a, a weird desperation. But Swordbreaker will cancel any follow-up attack, so Holy Wars and won't do anything. And for Raging Storm, the dragon has to run Axebreaker, but that isn't too common. Another thing to keep in mind are the Beast units. Beast Fangs, when transformed, will prevent their foe from making a follow-up attack. Sadly, we don't have a Breaker skill to prevent this. Speaking of not having a breaker, if you were to give a colored bow or dagger unit something like the budding bow, then the current bow breaker or dagger breaker wouldn't be able to do anything. But you know what does do something? No follow up. This skill completely nullifies the effects of breaker and other follow up skills. While it's not the easiest skill to obtain, it's very good. It's not mainly used against breaker skills, most people will use it against all those other weapons and refines and passive skills instead. Those are a much bigger threat than breakers. The list at the bottom has a bunch of skills and weapons that have similar effects to no follow up. The Creator Sword, Marita Sword, Sun Percussors, and the Soul of Zofia being the notable ones. I believe the event is over, but you could have gotten a free male Byleth from your copy of Three Houses. So that was just a free Creator Sword. For a final verdict, are breaker skills still worth using in today's meta? No. I think that they're not worth using. They're outclassed by other beast skills, it can limit the usefulness of a unit, and there's easy counterplay to them. If you have other thoughts on breakers, feel free to comment them down below. Maybe I missed something important, or I messed up on the long list of skills and weapons. While I don't think breakers are good, they can still be used. If you're looking for a really cheap budget build, then breakers are fairly good for that. Maybe the unit stats aren't good enough for other beast skills, or you just don't want to give them a good beast skill. Breakers are great budget options. It's like, whatever, I just need this unit to do something, here's a beast skill. They're also great for arena assault and story content. In both, you can look at the foe's team and plan which units bring. If you just need to deal with this one particular unit, then a breaker unit can easily do that for you. So basically, breakers shouldn't be on high investment units or super strong units that excel with a different beast skill. But rather, they should be on low investment budget builds for characters that you're just whatever, you know? So let's take a look at some common users of breakers. Reinhardt and Lelina have a similar game plan, they just want power and more power. As you invest more, you'll consider skills like low attack res or special spiral for Lelina. But at plus zero and with no investment, a simple breaker skill will do just fine. Raventone units like Robin can benefit from a breaker skill. Having the triangle advantage against colorless units, especially colorless bow units, is pretty helpful. With these three, it's again, like, whatever. I just need a budget build and these breaker skills will work just fine. It's not important that they have their optimal sets because that can be expensive. For the characters you don't really care about, 
Do you really want to break open your wallet just to get a better skill? Here's a visual list of all the characters that have these breaker skills. Some characters are obviously better to fodder than others. And then here's the other four. You know, I do hope that we get more breaker skills since they're kinda nice for their niche purposes. Hey, thanks for watching! If you have other thoughts on breaker skills, feel free to comment them down below. I'd love to talk about it. You know, I've been really liking these non-units review videos. It's pretty fun to talk about something else. Anyways, subscribe, leave a like, and check out my other Fire Emblem Heroes content. You can find me on Twitter at exo underscore tie, where I post any updates for new videos. With all that, stay hydrated folks, and stay safe.